Here's a prototype iPod Touch. Here's another prototype iPod Touch. And here's a prototype iPod Classic. While all of these devices are really nice looking, they all have one rather unfortunate thing in common. They are all no longer running prototype software. This unfortunate occurrence can happen because of a variety of factors, from an engineer restoring device to someone who just doesn't know the device's prototype, plugging it into a computer and noticing, oh wow, the software doesn't work like how it should, and then restoring it in iTunes. But regardless of whatever happens, this is a major problem with prototype devices. Also considering that the software for these prototypes can't just be downloaded from Apple and then restored to these devices, it makes it so this once fully prototyped device is just seemingly a normal device software that has prototype hardware. It's kind of a weird area with prototypes and that makes prototypes that aren't running prototype software pretty undesirable in most cases. And some of you who are familiar with Apple prototypes and Apple internal software may be thinking, oh well you can just dual boot or flash on prototype software. While these are extremely awesome ways to experience prototype software and see what the Apple engineers would have been using, it's not particularly useful for actual prototype devices. These methods of loading prototype software would either result in the device being tethered, meaning the device needs to be connected to a computer with a certain piece of software booted and set up to run, or for the prototype to run untethered, meaning that it does not require a computer to turn on, it would require a mismatched version of different pieces of software such as exploits for to turn on and a non-matching iBoot version. However, extremely recently, there has been an absolute breakthrough in being able to both load the prototype software and firmware, including the developmental version of iBoot and Diags, onto prototype devices. Thanks to MCG29 from Twitter, this is all now possible. Here's a production iPod Touch first generation, loaded with the fully functional firmware and software for demonstration purposes. Those of you with a keen eye may also recognize the switchboard build number being the same one as the ones on my PVT iPod Touch first generation prototypes. And while the process to extract the software and firmware didn't occur on one of my prototypes, it occurred on another similar PVT prototype that was running the same version. Now initially on the front end, without using any special software tools, generally the untethered versions of those kind of janky IPSW restore files that are made using dumps or restore bundles, yes I'm looking at you 9B3176N, but upon looking at the serial output of this iPod Touch, we can see that it's not just some janky modified version of iBoot that's released, but it's actually the full development version. As we can see from the iBoot splash screen, the build style is development, comparing it to what would be in one of those hacked builds or just a normal build of iOS, where it would say the build style is release. Additionally, because this is the full prototype firmware with development iBoot and the NOR, Diags, or Diagnostics, is fully functional. For those unaware, the iBoot version is directly related to whether Diagnostics is either present or can even run, so that's why this is extremely significant. So in the end, why is this all important? Why is this ability to restore the firmware and software even significant? Well, with prototypes, the whole idea of them is you want to try to keep them as original as possible. And something that is obviously not great is if they're running production software. And unfortunately, if a prototype has been restored to normal software, it's for all intents and purposes impossible for it to ever go back onto the original prototype firmware it was on. But of course, this method allows prototypes to run the proper prototype software and firmware and not be stuck on some release version of iOS. And perhaps one of the most amazing things that's come out of this entire thing is that the prototype software Alpine is actually able to be fully loaded properly onto iPhone first generations now. And this is far from the original, oh, let's just drag and drop some files and then the Skank Phone app is available on the home screen, which is most commonly those either saying they're prototype and they're just completely lying or the quote unquote prototype software iPhone first generations that everyone just sees on eBay. 
And for those who are curious, here is what the Alpine iPhone prototypes are actually supposed to be booting like. And a little interesting thing that me and MCG29 noticed is that the recovery screen is something that we've all seen before. As previously seen on that red M68 prototype board that leaked a few years ago, the recovery screen is white, meaning that this Alpine build's iBoot version would have likely been a very similar version to the iBoot build on the red M68 board. But anyways, thanks again MCG29, and definitely go check out his Twitter, which is linked in the description, as he's the one who actually made this possible. Thank you for watching my video, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, I actually have an entire prototype playlist on my channel, which is currently being shown. Please also consider leaving a like, and maybe even subscribe to my channel. Anyways, I hope you have a great day.